I'm Morgan of MorganDonner.com and today I'm going to share with you a little video on how I'm going to start making this really beautiful dress from the Marvelous Miss Maisel show. There's so many beautiful outfits in it and one of the really striking ones is this red dress that I think is one of the only dresses in the show that's actually referenced by name. It's, you know, you should wear that red dress. There's no pattern for this dress, so I'm going to need to make my own. I did do some browsing of historical 1950s dress patterns, and nothing quite hit what I was looking for, so I'm going to go ahead and have to draft it, nope, drape it myself. So I went and got some cheap fabric to be my muslin. Any good, like, non-stretch fabric should be just fine. Let's take off her beautiful necklace here. Now it's my beautiful necklace. So to drape the pattern, we're gonna need four pieces to stand in as the four quarters of her outfit. Got my four pieces, and those are gonna go draped on. I'm gonna start with the back just because in the show that's the easier of the pattern pieces. The dress definitely has a back zip. I'm going to pin these two together and they are going to be my back seam. So my back piece is all pinned together and I want that to go into approximately the center back of my mannequin here, which doesn't actually quite line up with the seam here. We should fix that someday. Maybe just a couple pins to kind of hold everything in place. I can already tell that I'm probably going to want to bring in the back just a little bit. Oh. Don't put pins in your mouth. I'm going to try and keep the grain of the fabric going kind of up and down the body, which means that we now have a little bit of excess here. So we're just going to repin that part of the back. Okay, so now the, the back is a little bit tighter to the mannequin. Now here's where we're going to start to run into issues with the fact that it's longer than it needs to be. This is pretty good. It helps smooth out some of those wrinkles that were trying to appear. Let's go ahead and do a, another one of those. Okay. So, I have a thing to hold my pins. I wish I had a thing to hold my scissors. Like, I need one of those like work aprons. The dress that I'm copying, the red dress, does have a side seam right here. Pin, pin, pin. Pin, pin, pin. Really interesting about this dress, I think, is that it does not seem to have an arm side seam. Like, in all the footage I saw, I didn't see anything that hinted at there being a seam here. There's even a really good close-up shot uh, where there's a seam that goes from the shoulder down the top of the arm. And there's pretty clearly no arm size seam here. Then we're going to pin our shoulder piece in place here. And I can cut off some of my excess on the side. All right. Now, the front is kind of interesting too. There's, you know, that, that slash across the body, the uh, like pseudo wrap front going on. And also this bodice where there's the bodice piece here and then the shoulder strap are not one piece. Like there is definitely a seam right where that shoulder strap meets the bodice. But the problem is we get into kind of an enigma when it comes to under the arm. But we definitely have two pieces for like the shoulder slash sleeve and then the body. I'm just going to pretend I'm cutting just the shoulder strap and I'm not going to worry about... Well, uh, I can't just not worry about the body piece. Damn it. Okay. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take a break away from worrying about 
the upper sleeve area because I think I really want to get the bodice in place before I do too much worrying about what's going on up here. So we've got this relatively centered and the dress definitely hugs the top of her bust and that's the flat part where there's no darts or shaping. It's, you know, everything else is based off of that being nice and flat and even. Forming my dart. Forming my dart. It's a lot of just making it up as I go along. I think it's time to start getting out our marking devices. So I'm just gonna kind of start tossing down some lines. And then if that's our center front, our cutout is kind of here. Okay, now we're starting to get into Enigma witchcraft land. I'm not sure what happens beyond this point. Like, that's where the dragons are. I don't know what, what's going on. We're going to kind of have to just start making it up. It goes out somehow to become a sleeve. You've got your, your bodice piece coming over here to meet the back, right? And in theory, you've got like a waist seam somewhere down there. Right. So I'm going to start cutting away some of my excess here because I've just got too much. And now I just need to kind of insert a piece there. So do I have any fabric scraps that are big enough? Oh, no, because it needs to be a sleeve too. Okay, I'll take this big old piece here. Here's where things start to get very... I think this actually might be too short for her sleeve. So I'm I might have to fix that. And I'm just going to kind of add a piece to this, pin these together, and we'll just pretend that the fabric continues. Okay, so this is super rough, but it's a start. So I'm ready to go ahead and start marking out my finished uh, pattern pieces. So I think we've got all of our potential seam uh, parts marked out. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy off and take a look at it flat. So that's the front bodice piece. Here's the back, the shoulder. Okay, I think I've got it. So before I forget, Let's draw on it to remember. So we're gonna up here say shoulder. This is what I should have done while it was still on the mannequin. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and cut this. These scissors are noisy. I've got my pseudo pattern pieces here. But I want to do some alterations, like for example, I want the sleeve here to come out to the same length, right? If I sew this, I'm <laughs> my sleeve is not doing what it should be doing here. Like this. So we're going to start doing some of our funny little pattern pieces. And if I'm going to just extend it a little bit, because once we do a drape of this, if it's too long, we can just cut it off. But for right now, let's do it a little bit extra long. And I'm actually going to give myself some extra sleeve room here. Again, if I need to cut this off, easy peasy. And this is kind of mystery land. I don't actually know if I need this extra or not. Uh, I'm going to call this sleeve shoulder. Shul uh, this is such a weird part. I don't know what to name it. I'm not going to name it back. It's not the back. <sighs> what should we call it, guys? This is the dragon piece. There. I 
I can get rid of my fabric pieces for now. I should probably reclaim my pins. In theory, I shouldn't need these pieces anymore. Hello. So I'm going to do some quick measuring of myself and compare it to my pattern before I fully commit to cutting it out. Puts us at a little over 15, which that's one half of my whole uh, garment here. 15 plus 15 is 30. That's pretty good. The bust might be a little bit small. I'm going to go ahead and make this just an ever so slightly bit bigger. And I'm going to X out that seam because that's not where I want it to cut. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go just ever so slightly bigger. There we go. Oh, and I should label this one. This is the uh, front. So let's cut that out. It's a good idea to mark out your seam allowance before you cut out your fabric or your pattern. Let me go ahead and do that now. The width of my measuring tape here is 5 eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and just make it 5 eighths. I went ahead and finished getting this cut out. Oh, oh no. Let's pin this into place. There we go. And now I need to go find my dragon piece. I just got a delivery. New sewing foot. And so now I get to sew these together. So let me go ahead and pin my dark pieces together. You know what this actually reminds me of? I think it's maybe Ariel's outfit when she's on land. That'd be a cute cosplay. Okay, so now our dragon piece, so bust, and this will eventually match up with here. Ooh, that seems way too long. This feels like I have already discovered a mess up. I feel like there's no way that this is supposed to be this long. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pretend it's gonna be okay. Because you know what? Maybe it will be okay. Time for some sewing. I'm using green thread today because I don't want to change it. Since I decided to go ahead and mark this whole pattern at 5 eighths, we want to go ahead and give ourselves a real easy line to follow. So this right here is the line that I was talking about where it's just not quite 5 eighths. So I wanted to go ahead and make myself a new line so that I'm not sewing every single seam slightly too big. With my new uh, sewing guide in place, I can go ahead and start sewing up. So we've got our little bodice going on. I'm going to go ahead and iron down all of the seam allowances. Alright, so immediately we've got some points of failure. The back, if I kind of snug everything in tight, when I was looking in the mirror, it looked okay. And then like the bust pieces, if I line it up a little bit more with my waist, the bust isn't too bad, although the dark could come up a little bit higher on me. But this is some shenanigans over here. A little 
chest cut out a little bit too much. I think my big point of failure here is how long this is. So I'm going to toss a couple pins in it now. And you remember when I was drawing out the pattern, I was like, ooh, that looks way too long. But I kind of just kept going. Then we're doing better. I don't have a mirror in front of me, but this at least feels a little closer than it, what it was when I first put it on. The seam looks mostly down the middle of my arm. The point of my bust of my darts definitely needs to move over here. Honestly, this whole section here needs to move inward on both of my pieces. So what I should do to make that happen is just add a little bit in the side seam here, which will then move everything else inward. <laughs> you guys don't need to see this much of my cleavage. So we're going to need to pull that in a little bit. What am I going to do about bras? I do have several of the um, somewhat 1950s style silhouette bras. Every single one of them that I have has the, the cup of the, of the bra comes up in a triangle like this. So it actually has a relatively narrow sort of neckline. That doesn't work. I think I remember seeing some overwire bras that would maybe do the job. Basically, exactly the same way that my tank top is showing, all of the vintage style bras I have are going to show. I might be doing lots of uh, browsing for bras on the internet for the, the next week, trying to find something that works, because everything I own is either going to give me a very rounded silhouette and I might just have to accept that that's what it's going to be and deal with it. Or I can try and find something that's a little bit more pointed off. We'll see, right? All right, so I think I'm gonna, with that, end the video for right now. And this is going to be the first part of my attempt to make that Miss Maisel dress the red dress as they call it in the show and i hope that i will come up with some good solutions for how to proceed especially with the undergarment problem that we discussed and i'll see you next time have a great day